All right, good afternoon, everybody. I'm here with John Loomer, who is one of the foremost Facebook marketing experts in the country, and he specializes in Facebook advertising. John's been using Facebook for business purposes dating back to 2007 while he cut his teeth with the MBA, and he went on his own at the end of 2011, and his blog was named one of Social Media Examiner's top 10 social media blogs from 2013 to 2015, and that is saying a lot. And today we are going to discuss lead ads versus landing pages, as well as Facebook's trend of trying to keep people on the platform via their buy button, these lead ads, and instant articles. How you doing today, John? Oh, I'm doing all right, Dave. How you doing? Doing all right, doing all right. It's Friday, and Fridays are always at least pretty good. So I'm, <laughs> uh, I'm excited for the weekend to come, and uh Got uh, my horns playing, so ho hopefully nice. it all uh, ends up being being a good weekend for myself. <laughs> How's everything going? Uh, awesome. Yeah. awesome. Yeah, I mean we're uh, it's cooling down out here in Colorado, and some and baseball's finally all over our, our last fall ball uh -huh. was last Sunday, and we're gonna have some free time on our hands. We'll see what we do. You won't know what to do with yourself. You'll probably you'll probably end up uh, watching the World Series. <laughs> yeah, probably. probably. <laughs> Well, cool. Well, hey, let's let's dig right into this. I know um, this is a topic that is extremely of interest to myself and, and should be for anyone looking to um, get uh, advertisements or conversions or, or whatever out there on Facebook. And uh, there's been, you know, there's some pros and cons uh, to, to doing it different ways. And, and I know Facebook, I know they're the big bad giant in some people's eyes, but I, I have really noticed that they do try to help with the user experience and everything, and, and one of the latest and greatest things that they've rolled out here are lead ads. So mm -hmm. um, can you go ahead and describe the differences between lead ads and landing pages, just the basics, and then we can dig into some details? Yeah, so the, the old-fashioned way of collecting uh, leads um, by using Facebook that you share a link on Facebook, whether it be organically or an ad, and they click on that link, they go to a landing page on your site, and from there you've got a, a form, some sort of offer, they complete the form, and they're added to, add to your email list. Uh, but with lead ads, it completely streamlines that process. I mean, something that Facebook uh, figured out is, you know, that, the, first of all, those, those ads, Previously may have been less effective because you're taking them out of the experience on Facebook and maybe the load time was slow. And so they create lead ads. So basically you click uh, the link or the call to action button within the ad and it automatically flips over and brings up a form. This is currently only on mobile devices, but it will come to, to desktops, desktop as well. Pulls up a form that automatically pre-fills information that you're asking for uh, that's pulled from the, the user's profile. And they mm -hmm. can override it and they can say, oh, that's not the email address I want to use or that's not my name or whatever. Mm -hmm. You can also ask, ask custom questions. But the main thing is it's entirely within Facebook. It's quick. It's easy. It's streamlined. And so some of the results I've seen are pretty incredible in terms of then the, the ability to collect those leads. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean it makes sense, you know. The, you know, it, from the out, you know, just from the early looking at it, it looks like it's a no-brainer. But you know, we'll we'll get into yeah. some possible pros and cons. But to back up just a tad, you said it's it's uh, available on mobile. When is it going to be available on desktop? Do you know? Soon, uh, Facebook basically announced recently um, a, a few updates that they'll be making across uh, lead ads. So. Not only will it be available within desktop, but you'll be able to do video ads that then have the, the lead lead form um, integration. But additionally, you can include within the carousel ads, so the multi-product ads, where one of those will then be the, um, the, the lead form prompt, whatever that is. So um, when that's all going to happen, not real sure, but it's supposed to be soon. And, and in regards to, uh, you know, with our agency here, you know, we've been waiting to want to try these, but they're not available to everybody. Do you know when they'll have stopped? I don't know if it's in beta right now or if they're just rolling it out for, 
you know, it's out of beta, but just using for select companies. I do know that there's, I don't know if it's a waiting list for, or, or how that works. Do you know when, you know, this will be available to the masses? I've heard of very few people who don't have it, and, but I would check if you, if you do you use Power Editor. Uh, we we we've gone back and forth between Power Editor and Business Manager. So um, where where they're currently, we, you know, we tested it. We tested it, tested Ad Espresso, and we didn't really yeah. love that. Sorry, Ad Espresso, but um, we uh, so we've gone back to the platforms on Facebook, and we actually just got approved for like a thousand accounts to work with. So. Um, I got to get with my team to see which one. You know, we're yeah. always in the marketing. You're always testing, right? And yeah, well, uh, I, so I'm not exactly sure, but I can ask them where we're at on that. Yeah, because I'm not even sure it's, if it's available within the main Ad Create tool. So I'd make sure you're using Power Editor. Okay. Um, as far as I know, everyone should have access to it now. Okay. I'll, I'll check it out. We actually uh, we're looking into that now, but I do know that it wasn't available as of at least a couple months ago. Um, but I'll. I'll, I'll definitely check oh, it out. Yeah. So, it's, so it's basically a, it's a, through it's Power Editor. It's a pretty recent development. Though. Yeah, okay. it's, it's a pretty recent development too over the last month or so. Okay. Okay. Yeah. All right. Well, obviously, you know, it just seems like, well, of course you're going to want to do that, right? It's easier to fill out, better for mobile users. Um, but a possible con is you're losing the traffic, which means right. people won't be at, at your website, possibly not looking at your content. You might be losing trust. What are your thoughts on that? Yeah, it's there's, there's a give and take there. So, um, not having the traffic first of all, primarily means, um, at least for me, I, I love using website custom audiences. So, mm -hmm. so re remarketing people based on uh, the pages of my site that they visited, um, that's no longer possible because they're not visiting, visiting my site. Um, if you've got any upsell, cross sell, or anything redirecting them um, after they opt in on your site, that's not really possible either. You can you can provide a, a link at the end of the form, but they don't need to click it. Mm -hmm. So um, you lose that as well. Mm -hmm. um, so, but and, and the other potential negative then of the lead ad is okay. Being that easy, is there an issue with quality? Huh, you took that, the next so, question out of my mouth. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, I could tell you this. Is, I mean, this is still early stages, but. I have tested emailing these lists that are built purely through the lead ads, and I at least have had, and again, small sample size, but 100% deliverability. So, I mean, these, these are email addresses that people provide within, wow. um, that's attached to their Facebook account. Mm -hmm. Now, is it something that they're, they use frequently? Is it an email address they haven't updated in five years? Mm -hmm. I mean, that's something that I don't know yet. Um, in terms of the the effectiveness of that, but that said, I mean, just I, especially think about load times and all that kind of stuff. Um, you get, think about all the people you likely lose who click on a link to go to your landing page. A lot. And and yeah, a lot. So, are there some potential issues with this as far as not having that traffic? Um, maybe the quality is down. Who knows? Um, I mean, this is all possible, but in, in my mind, it, it's still the, the pros far outweigh the cons um, in, in that respect. Now, another <laughs> current negative, if you don't use a third-party tool, is no automatic syncing to your CRM. I saw your so, post about that today, actually. Yeah, that's right. Hmm. So, so if somebody opts in on your landing page um, and fills out a form, it's connected to Infusionsoft or MailChimp or whatever, mm -hmm. they'll automatically be sent your autoresponder. Well, if they complete the lead form on Facebook, Facebook gives you a CSV file mm -hmm. that you that you get out of your Facebook page that you export, mm -hmm. and then after exporting, you have to make sure it's in the right format and import into your CRN. Mm -hmm. And if you're not doing that constantly, mm -hmm. people are going to be like, what's up? I opted in yep. and I didn't get anything. So, yep. Um, luckily, there are third-party tools that are integrating with that. Um, the one that I've been using is, is Drift Rock Lead Response. Um, so they, they stand currently with six different CRM uh, softwares, but um, even if they don't sync with the CRM that you use, mm -hmm. um, they can have an autoresponder go out 
from email address of your choice, so basically from you. It would, so it would basically be whatever you would have told them anyway mm -hmm. in that first email. So then it makes that process um, you know, more streamlined. So uh, there, there is a solution to, to that problem. Of course, those things do cost money too. <clears throat> but when you weigh, you know, weigh again the pros and the cons, if I'm getting, for example, you know, 50% in some case, cases the cost of a lead using lead ads, so I'm going to spend a couple hundred dollars a month or whatever it is to make sure those are synced, and I'm spending a few thousand dollars a month, it all makes sense. So it really yeah. depends on, you know, what you're doing. Yeah, no, I, I hear you. And to um, kind of take from the blog you sent today, and it's, it was so ironic I saw that because that was one thing that annoyed us and continues to annoy us with the Twitter cards. And yeah. I didn't know that we weren't uh, you live and learn, right? <laughs> As you're sure. getting in this and marketing, you know, especially in marketing, right? I mean, there's so many new things. And we were doing these Twitter ads, and I was like, how is it possible we have gotten zero response on these, right? And then mm -hmm. they were like, well, no, we we have. I was like, well, where are they? Oh, they're over here. I'm like, guys, <laughs> I had no <laughs> clue. And they were sitting there for weeks. And uh, yeah. and I was, and that's one thing I wanted to discuss with you today, uh, the annoyingness of that, if it works the same way. And then randomly this morning I see you did a whole – you always seem to be one step ahead of the game there, John. And uh, <laughs> to take from that post, um, the two ones that you mentioned, the companies were Drift Rock, that's D-R-I-F-T-W-R-O-C-K, lead response. And Actually, there's no, w, there's no W in there. It's uh, oh. just Drift Rock, D R I F T R O C K. R O C K. Okay, thanks for correcting that. And then Sync Sumo is another good one. That's S Y N C S U M O. And, yeah, uh, and, to be, and to be clear with Sync Sumo, that that one, they already have a tool that syncs with your CRM, but it doesn't yet sync with uh, Facebook lead ads. But mm -hmm. it's going, it's going to. So. Gotcha. Gotcha, gotcha. Okay, and um, to circle back around to, you know, who this might, you know, which direction you might want to go with the landing page versus these lead ads, are, are these, um, are they going to be more expensive? Um, so, first of all, it depends on who you ask. Um, I, what I've seen so far, and so this is just me, let's not make it a universal statement, but my CPM, so the cost to reach people, is actually about twice as high with the lead ads and driving people to my website, which is interesting because my cost per lead is quite a bit less for the lead hmm. ad. So that just shows you, again, the success rate of that, if you do it right. Because I've heard of some people – now, whenever you have a CPM that's that much higher, you better be more effective. Oh, yeah. So so I've, I have heard some people have said, oh, this is too much, too expensive, and cost me too much per lead. Well, so, I mean, there, there are lots of factors that go into whether or not you collect that lead. Does your, is your ad crap? Because now everything is in that ad, whether mm -hmm. or not someone's going to opt in. And you might make it easy, but if your targeting is terrible, if, if your um, uh, creative is bad, your copy is bad, whatever, and you're spending double to reach people, that's going <laughs> to be a waste of money. Yeah. So, um so, again, it, it's something that everybody should experiment with. But, yeah, the cost I'm seeing to reach people is higher, but the, the, it's just so effective, though, the cost per lead is The conversion cost low. is lower. And, that, and that's really where we, at the end of the day, is what we concentrate on. Of course, there's lots of different stepping stones that, that you look at to get to that point. But at the end right. of the day, it's cost per conversion is what it comes it, down to. And you use the CPMs, you use the cost per clicks, you do all that stuff. To, and correct me if I'm wrong. I mean, this is this is my thought on it. But you know, at the end of the day, that's what matters. You know, what right. what actually ended up happening. You know, the end result. What what does that cost you? You know, right. and, and you dig in yeah. a ton with your CPM discussions and your cost per click. And we'll get into that on another webinar. But you you you, you emphasize that all the time. And yeah, um, and, and to be clear, kind of the, the way um, you should use it because. I mean, again, currently it's only for mobile, and it makes sense why they prioritize that way because um, what, what I've seen up until this point, up until lead ads, the C CPM for mobile devices is lower than the CPM for desktop, partly, I'm sure partially because of um, uh, competition in desktop newsfeed. However, once again, the issue is 
you, you click that ad from a mobile device, go to a landing page that may or may not be mobilely optimized, and you got to fumble through with your thumbs to get all, get all this information people are requesting. So the conversion was more expensive typically from a mobile device and from desktop. So so the way I recommend going about this is, especially now, currently, because it's right now only available on mobile, mobile device um, for lead ads, you, you still run two ads, running one, uh, starting mobile devices uh, for the lead ad, and then one that's still sending people to your landing page for desktop. Mm -hmm. in, in reality, you could still run the once going to your going to your landing page to all placement and see how it does. That, that's Don't what I was going to say. Yeah. yeah, that's what I was going to ask you if that's what your advice would be. Is I mean, you got to test, 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 and test again, yeah. right? Uh, so you might as well try everything, but your gut tells you. I mean. You do your due diligence, everyone, but yeah. if John had to guess, and I, I guess if, if I had to guess, I would definitely say that these lead ads, the, when you take down barriers of entry, when you remove an entire yeah. click, I mean, that's that's big deal in marketing. Um, I mean, it's, and especially on mobile, because it's so yeah. tricky to, to collect information from people on a mobile device. You're mm -hmm. just going to pre-fill a form, say, okay, mm -hmm. all I got to do is hit submit. Oh, that's easy. Mm -hmm. So again, I mean, it's, it's I guess a small sample size. I mean, I spent several thousand dollars um, on lead ads so far, and and the results have been pretty clear for me. Okay, and and, and on that note, I don't I don't know how pertinent this is because you're going to want to test maybe starting with, but I just kind of had a question. If you you had to choose a percentage of budget to spend mm -hmm. between lead ads and driving people to landing pages, what would you do? Well, I mean, for now, I would base it primarily just on placement. So, uh, I think I think I'd go maybe fifty-fifty. Although I may actually, I may spend even more on on the lead ads just because it's more effective. Mm -hmm. So, I think uh, again, depending on your results, you may want to go more towards sixty-forty or seventy-thirty, mm -hmm. since you're, you'll actually collect more leads through the lead ads. And and again, people are on mobile devices more than they are on desktops these days. So mm -hmm. it probably makes more sense to spend a little bit more money on the lead ad side, assuming it's working for you. Okay. Yeah, it sounds like you're sold on it. And, and I'm, I'm heavily leaning that way too. Um, you know, I it just – anything that makes it easier, especially on mobile, you're right. We, we have just seen it's you got to make it so easy for them. And uh, the only thing is you got to be creative one way or another, right? So just yeah. find, find ways to be creative, do your tests. Um, and um, but but definitely you would be a fool to not try out the lead ads at, at a minimum. Absolutely, at do a minimum. that. And uh, all right, well, cool. Well, let's. Uh, is there anything else you want to add on lead ads versus landing pages? I think we've kind of gone over the. You know, obviously a pro of a landing page is, and um, you know, people like SEO Moz and and a lot of the people like that, they can really teach you how to create awesome landing pages, um, and a, a very good landing page will build trust and all of that. Uh, yep. But um, obviously, and it could be weeding out unqualified leads, and you know, proto landing pages. But you're right, and, and you know, you don't know what kind of plugin, or you're, you know, if it takes more than what 3.3 seconds to load, people are going to bounce on you more times than not, and uh, most people aren't going to really know how 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 bad that is with everybody else's. So, you know, a potential con for a landing page is that it might, you know, deter people from filling out the form. It's an extra click. So everyone just needs to take all that into consideration and um and uh you know do your own testing. But do you have anything else to add on on this subject before we jump on to the uh buy button and the instant articles? Yeah, I mean part of it I think is keep in mind without a landing page your pitch is entirely in the ad now, whereas before it's like you just want to get people to click so they go to your landing page and learn more about it. Mm -hmm. So you have you have to be a little bit more thorough, maybe a little bit more creative, and explaining what it is they're signing up for. Mm -hmm. um, so I think that's the first thing. Something else to consider is we can also use this as an opportunity to remarket to people who have maybe visited that landing page mm -hmm. previously but didn't convert because, again, it may be – Difficult, tricky, whatever. Mm -hmm. um, with the lead ad to make it easier for them. Um, That's a great point. I'd like to it. stop and emphasize for you right there, John. W w what you're saying is build a website custom audience based on putting a pixel on the page that people went and went to that 
landing page, but they did not convert. Right. You can do this, and you can learn all all this from from John Loomer. He he talks about all this stuff, all, you know, all the time, and it's amazing information. So I just want to emphasize that what John's suggesting is to go put a pixel on your landing page, create a custom audience on for that page, and then for sure remarket people with the lead ads because they've already seen your landing page, and they yeah. just need, might need a little extra nudge. So that's a brilliant idea. Thank thank you for bringing that up. That, that that's and, a phenomenal and, tip. And it should even be clear in the copy. Like, hey, I, I, I saw that you visited the landing page for this and, and didn't convert. I'm going to make it easier for you. Because otherwise, you just send them the same ad, same ad copy and imagery in the form of a lead ad. They don't know it's a lead ad. They don't know it's easier. So be clear, like, hey, this is easier. Um, this is a lead ad. So all you got to do is click this button or click the link, and it'll bring up the, the Facebook form, and you don't even have to go to my site. So, you know, whatever. Be creative with the copy. I see a lot of people who are like, oh, yeah, try that. Didn't that work? Well, they think it's the same ad by looking mm -hmm. at it. Um, yeah. So you have to be clear that you're actually trying to help them and yeah. based on something you know that they already did in your site. Phenomenal point. Phenomenal point. We're, we're gonna, I'm going to implement that <laughs> right away. <laughs> All right. Well, uh, with this trend in, uh, in mind of, uh, you know, Facebook trying to keep people on their platform, you know, let, let's touch on, on the buy button and instant articles. Uh, you know, buy button, it's, it's fairly self-explanatory unless I'm missing something, but um, can, can you give any negatives to the buy button? I mean, actually, the, the same arguments we made for um, the negatives on lead ads regarding not sending the traffic, this would probably be a, a louder argument regarding that, right? Because with someone who visits the landing page for a product versus – um, an opt-in, a product, they're most likely, more likely to be thinking about it. They're not going to buy today, so to remarket to them could be really, really effective. And mm -hmm. so if someone never, never visits that landing page, you know, that could be an issue. But so, so basically the buy button is the same concept, though, as a lead ad in that you're going to complete the transaction entirely in Facebook. You click that buy button, and a form comes up to actually make the purchase in Facebook. So... Same kind of positives there, though, too. It's streamlined. It's easy. They never even have to – they don't have to sit there waiting for your website to load for, I guess, it's eight seconds on average. Mm -hmm. And uh, it may not be mobile-friendly, you know, all that kind of stuff. So, um, and additionally, once you start buying through Facebook, um, and I, I guess right now the, the integration is primarily through Shopify, Um uh, and if it's not at the, not this way now, you know it will be. They're gonna they'll have all that stuff on file where you don't need to provide your credit card number again and again and again oh, and again. Yeah. So, so th once you've done it a single time, it'll make that process of buying it on, on Facebook so easy. Now, what about can you do cost per click with these lead ads and buy buttons for yeah, CPM? I mean, well, actually, with the, with the lead ads, your options are to optimize for the lead itself or to optimize for the click, so cost per click. Those are your only two options. So you can't even do just typical CPM with lead ads. And since okay. since I don't have the buy button because I don't have a Shopify um, site, uh, I'm not sure exactly how you can optimize for that, but it's, it's probably similar, I would assume. Okay. All right. Yeah, I mean, th those are some good things to consider. And, and, again, it all comes back down to integrating a strategy between the two uh, and obviously doing your testing. You'll hear me say that. I'm sure you'll hear John say that constantly, and you'll hear other marketers say it because you've got to test. I mean, there's not a one-size-fits-all fit all in, in any company, in any marketing theory or, or tactic or at all. So try them out. But you need to know about this stuff so that you can at least try it out and, and integrate, you know, some of the things John is saying. You have your landing pages, do the custom audiences, remarket to them with this at a minimum, but at the same time try it out because, yeah, I mean, as long as you've established trust um, through your branding and other ways, uh, these other things should be very, very beneficial to your ultimate, you know, sales goals and, and marketing goals. Um, all right, moving on to uh, instant articles. Um, John, why don't you go ahead and explain what instant articles are for the listeners? Okay, so whether we're talking about lead ads or the buy button or instant articles, in every case there's a trend here, and it's one that some publishers are scared of, and they don't like it because they're losing control. 
Um, and so, so it's, it's all Facebook trying to keep people on the platform. And there may be some selfish reasons for this, but at the end of the day, it's been really good for user experience. So this, these incident articles, um, first of all, they explain what, how, they, how they behave. Uh, when you click on, on a link now shared within Facebook, um, where th there's actually a feed from the, the publisher where it's in this format, it automatically opens up. Um, and so it's in, it automatically opens up the article in Facebook. But it's rich media content, dynamic. You can do all kinds of crazy things with it that you can't really necessarily do easily with with a with a website. Uh, but you can also have it. Well, can you dig into that? Like, what what are some of the dynamics? As, as far as so so rich media like autoplay video that will come up with within the article. Um, I saw this ad from Wendy's that um, <laughs> it's really hard to even explain. But it, it, you, you could flip through side side to side or up and down to to, to view different content, and um, and but there's also like uh, some some you can, like maps that you can engage with. Um, I mean, there's just all kinds of things, and it's it's much more rich, a much more rich experience than being on someone's website in the first place. Like there's like tilting your phone to move stuff around and things like that. Um, so it's a really good user experience. It ends up being entirely within Facebook. That said, you still get the traffic because you, th this is coming from a feed from your site that is in that instant articles format. What do you mean you still um, get the traffic? That's because been the big, still, that's been the big sticking yeah. point for these publishers. And, and um, I mean, yeah, it's a great user experience, but you know, it would be a great user experience if people were able to buy a Lamborghini for $5,000, you know. I mean, the, the people, you know, on the other side of it, you know, you need to be able to monetize that traffic you need, or else you can't continue to produce the good content, you know. Right. So can, can you explain, because I, I wasn't under the impression that you were able – I mean, it was good for branding for, like, the New York Times, you know, branding purposes mm -hmm. for big-time magazines. But for, like, the smaller guy, when branding, it's important, but not like that, you know, um, and you do want to drive people to your website. You do want to be able to monetize that through one form or fashion. How, how, how from the other side of the coin, yeah. how, how is it beneficial? So, so, first of all, you have complete control over what, what goes into that content. You have you have links there within that content that continues oh. to link out to your stuff. Okay. Um, you can have ads. You can place you your can own have... ads in there if you want. Okay. Can, okay. Or, or 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 you could have Facebook place ads in there, and then you okay. you you take a certain amount of that. So you, it's it's up to you how you want to do it. Okay. Um, but uh, and end of the day, like you could still put you know whatever it is you're tracking. Um, I don't I don't know if Google Analytics or whatever's in there now, but but you'll still collect all that traffic, so you'll you'll know who is visited or and when and all that kind of stuff. So you can still report back to whatever advertiser you have and say, this is how many impressions you got. You know, these right. are the metrics. These are the clicks on your ad. Blah blah blah. All of that is based, so it, it's still all the metrics and all the stuff still operates like a you know a page on somebody's website. Then. Yeah, and I, to be clear, I'm not 100% clear on all of that. So do you okay. lose something? But well, first of all, you're going to lose the, the typical navigation you get on your site. That's mm -hmm. not there. Um, I don't I don't know if you can still have the commenting in there the normal. I don't know. A lot of this is still completely new to me. But there, you still have some, some control of it. You still do get this traffic, um, at least to a point, because it's going to go, you, you can in, embed, you know, whatever it is your tracking software is. Um, so you, you that that goes into all of your data. Okay. So, uh, but yeah, I don't. I, I'm not clear on does this impact your SEO, positively or negatively. Uh, mm -hmm. I I would I would assume if you if this is still coming from your feed and it's easier to read and people engage with it more, that it would positively impact it. Mm -hmm. But I, I'm still not 100 percent clear on that myself. Well, this is this is so new, uh, instant yeah. articles, and and I'm fairly certain about this. This has not been rolled out. This, this is uh, this has been for like just the top publishers, like the top. Yeah, yeah. Twenty-five. And that's the other 20, thing I'm not clear like on. Number, yeah. 
Uh, that's the thing I'm not clear on is how difficult is it is it to create this type of content yeah. um, to, to create these seeds for Facebook. They make it they try to make it sound like it's easy, mm-hmm. but uh, for like a typical blogger like me, because it's something I could actually do. So yeah, there's still a lot we don't know at this point. Yeah, yeah. Well, you know that's marketing for you, right? And uh, yeah. it's, uh, it's ever evolving, uh, but that's why you need to follow people like John Loomer so he can <laughs> keep you up to date on, on all these latest things because they're they're ever changing and uh, yeah. there's going to be something new and next. But you know, I you know I, I you know I do give it to Facebook. I you know I used to kind of you know be the you know you know like oh I don't like the man and all that. But if you really watch <laughs> them, they they really do seem to. To try to respond to what's best, and obviously, you know, you have to pay to play, but that's like in anything in life. So, um, you know, lear- learning, you know, watching them, and they they really are giving good opportunities for marketers through all the targeting, and then things like this instant articles. There's going to be ways to make this advantageous, but you just got to keep on on top of it all, and, and then just yeah. use your use your marketing and your creative brain to figure out how to do it. So, and, and we and we can't fight this. We can't always think about what is best for us. And the way I've, I've been doing things. Yep. Because at the end of the day, these changes, if users don't like them, they won't they won't last. Yep. But if users prefer to engage with instant articles, you better mm-hmm. adapt. You better. If users prefer to engage more within Facebook than wait for your slow, crappy site to load for eight seconds, you better adapt. So you're gonna yep. you're just gonna die. Yep. Yep. I mean, everyone needs to take that to their grave because that is so important you've got to stay on top you got to be open to change and uh you got to um you got to stay on top and you got to try stuff out i'm learning that more and more and 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 nobody can be stuck in their ways of course don't go with every every new shiny thing out there but you should you should try to try to stay on top of, of at least the main platforms and um and try some of these things out, but I, I do think the things we talked about today are are, are some uh, items that that everyone out there should give a go. Do try the lead ads. Do try the buy button. And once instant articles is available, it, you know I, I definitely uh, my personal opinion would be agree with John. Give, give it a go, test and see what happens, and uh, you know just get familiar with it because yeah, the users are dictating where all of this stuff is going. So, uh, John, I, I greatly appreciate your time, and I definitely want to let people know how to learn more from you. Uh, you can follow John on Twitter at J-O-N-L-O-O-M-E-R. That's at John Loomer, and it's uh, johnloomer.com. And uh, you also have your Power Hitters Club where people can get more extensive learning for you from you. Can you uh, give us the link to that one, John? Yeah, so two things. I mean, uh, Power Hitters Club is johnlimmer.com slash PHC, but I also have a free workshop coming up in November. So I don't know when this is going to air, but in November, is, is, uh, when is this going to go out, Dave? Well, uh, well, because you said that, when, when is it going out in November? November uh, 12th is the date still right now. Okay, I'll, I'll push this up the list, and we'll, we'll push this one out before then. Okay, well, the free work- workshop is to go to johnlimmer.com slash lead dash ads dash workshop and so that'll be like a 60 to 90 minute workshop where we go over everything you know that has to do with lead ads okay awesome well john i appreciate your time it, it's always fun talking with you and uh i've learned some stuff today and i am sure our, our listeners have as well so uh have yourself an awesome friday and weekend and um we look forward to uh talking with you about the next one all right sounds good thanks dave all right buddy have a good one Bye-bye. Bye.